last night I was really very happy to meet you all and I was thinking how I could reach you so spontaneously. It was a great thing to share the moments of meeting you. I went into your beings, to your problems yesterday. And as Gregor has said that you all have got mostly the left-sided problem, not so much the right side, means ego is not so much there as your left-sided problem. And the left-sided problem is the problem that comes to you because of certain mistakes you have committed in your seeking. So it doesn't matter, it can be worked out. But the basic of the left-sided problem comes because I think you didn't get the love of your parents also in your childhood. One of the biggest problems is that of the mother's problem, that you didn't feel that security when you were a child to begin with. It's a mother's side, left side is a mother's side. The another thing could be that uh, when you went into the society, they tried to create diffidence in you by their own norms and ideas about life. You see, their idea of success is very different from the idea of a seeker, because for a seeker, the only success he can have is when he has found out the truth. You see, that's what he's seeking. And if one child is born who is a seeker in a family who doesn't know what a seeking is, they are just seeking money or something else like that, which is very superficial and nonsensical for a seeker, the diffidence grows in him gradually in the subconscious and he starts thinking that, are we mad or something wrong with us or are we something strange people, what's happening to us? So how is it that we are so much different from the rest of the people who are madly doing other things, so much involved, and we don't find the fun in that. So the left side starts getting, accumulating that diffidence within yourself. Then you find some friends who are with you, you find people who talk the same language sort of thing, that they are seekers, they have to seek, and they have to seek something. But the another diffidence that starts afterwards when you become a group or sort of this whole thing becomes known to people uh, who are, say, in the market, we can say, who are in the market, <laughs> who are just trying to mobilize their money into new channels where they can make some money, you see. So these people, when they come to know about such a group which is still uncertain, does not know how to, where to go, what to do, you see, it's a very a uh, very vulnerable society, very vulnerable society because there's nothing established, they don't know what to do, they realize that these people are wasting their time, the other people who are doing other seeking like uh, money and all those things, they understand that. But they cannot also understand what they should do. So it's a very vulnerable, a very uh, risky type of a life they lead. And in that risk, the first hit comes when they give up their parents, you see, because when they are, because of the parents' attitude towards them, they have to give. And the parents in America, I was surprised, are really not at all kind to their children. They have only rights, they have no duties, I feel. I mean, it's just the other way around in India. They have no duties for their children. They are rich people, they don't look after your, I mean, needs, nothing. I mean, it's something surprising. The other day, somebody told me a story that if the son is having a party or something and he's enjoying himself with his friends, then the, if they puts the music a little loud, the mother in the other house would ring up the police and call him to ask the police to arrest this fellow. I mean, this, this is one can't imagine in India. On the contrary, the mother, if she knows that the boys are going to have the party, she'll go all out to prepare something nice for them and how to make them happy and she would disappear from there so that their age group should enjoy themselves. I mean, this is a very common practice in India. So many such things, you know, have crawled up because of, I think, war, I would place it 
one of the things is war. Because of war, your parents got disturbed and they got upset. Let's also give them some grace about it. All right. So they were all very much frantic and disturbed and their nerves were broken. Let's take it like that. Now whatever it happened, then this also the material uh, advancement, so-called, through your industrial development came through. All right. That also put such a pressure on them. I mean, if somebody has a TV, you must have TV. If you don't have a TV, then you are a gone case. If you have some plastics, you must have some plastics. They have some nylons, you must have some nylons. You see, the competition was in accumulating these things all the time. And the machines were trying to create more and more of this nonsense because they are hungry things, you know. So they were consuming all the mother's earth and co converting it into all these nonsensical things, which now is a big mountain and is a big problem for you how to dispose them of. And uh, the other pe the people in the household were trying to compete with others in this kind of a nonsensical pursuit. You see, the whole thing was a chaos for you because you are born with a different, different awareness within you because you are awakened to a fact that material things are not going to give you joy. And this is what was difficult for you to convince your elders. And the elders also got into the funny ideas of Freud, I should say, and all the people started writing books about nonsensical things, how to treat your children, how to behave towards them. It's something absurd, I can't believe it's shocking. When I hear, I mean, there was a girl in Switzerland, she told me that my child, who was only one and a half month or something like that, died, died in the, in his bedroom. I said, in his bedroom? I can't understand, what is that? They said, we don't make our children sleep with us. I mean, I can't understand. Just I can't understand, how can you leave? I mean, you can't sleep, your children are not with you. You just can't sleep, you are so worried. And this is something, you see, from the very childhood, if you are left in another room, you feel, I mean, you must be frightened and I don't know what must be happening to you. I mean, when I give you realization, I'm even worried about you. Now what's going to happen to these children who have got realization? I have to leave somebody here to look after you, to consolidate it, to manage it, to make you grow, otherwise you may be frightened. It's really, it is so. With this, one feels very much uh, disturbed uh, and whom to blame? You see, you cannot blame anyone. The whole thing we can say was, it was to be like this, so accept it as it is. But it has harmed you on the left-hand side. So to begin with, in your psyche, I would say the problem started from the right, from the time you were born. Now you took your birth with your choice. You decided to be born to these parents. You thought them to be sane people. Maybe your mistake. And then you took your birth in this great country, which had also some greatness about it, no doubt, which I will tell you now what is the greatness of this country, is why you were born in this country. And then thirdly, that you had to live with your own nature, you could not take to the nature of other people. And the dis difference between the two, the gap was so great that you just couldn't manage it, you see. And you had to get out of it and once you are out of your home, you are absolutely vulnerable to these people who are attacking you. Because you are not yet matured enough to face them, you are quite young and you are suddenly attacked, your innocence is attacked. Then now you should not do this to your children. That is very important. But now the children are going to be very powerful people. Now look at the matured ones sitting here, just like great grand old, old mothers, you see. They are watching the things, like when I went back, these two boys, one without a shirt, one with a shirt standing there, I asked him, what are you doing here? He said, we are, we are looking after all the crooks who are trying to go inside and <laughs> we are protecting you from them. <laughs> these two little things, one was so big, I said, still they are. They have put all their toys there to fight, you see, all the crooks that are going in. So they are all standing there, both of them. So it's like that, you see, these great children are to be born, no doubt. But in between is your generation which is a very important generation for me because you are the foundation of that great kingdom, the kingdom of God. So you are also very important. So the first thing you have to do, as I said, to say that, Mother, I am not guilty. Do not take anything upon yourself. Say that, Mother, I am not guilty. You don't blame yourself for anything. All right? First thing. 
Secondly is that the left side gives you a kind of a diffidence. It is such a vicious circle, you get a diffidence, all right. Because of diffidence, you do not get your realization, maybe. Even if you get your realization, you go little bit coming, little bit going, you see all the time and you get more diffidence. Then the vicious circle starts. The diffidence again uh, stops your uh, feeling the vibrations, again you get into diffidence, you start blaming yourself and hating yourself, again it goes in a very bad vicious circle. So first and foremost thing for all of you is to have complete confidence into your faith that you have to seek something beyond. First thing, this is the first faith you should have that you have to seek something beyond and whatever you are doing, we are doing in this may be mistaken, doesn't matter, but your aims were correct. Your aims were perfect and your aims were correct, all right. Now the second thing you have to know in yourself that you are not all these things like the worldly things that you see, but you are the Spirit, you are the Spirit. Now believe that you are, do not have definence because you have failed so far, doesn't matter whatever has happened, ultimately if you find it, you find it. So second thing you have to know, second thing you have to know that you are the Spirit. This is the second point and I was gradually yesterday strengthening your left side, of which you are not aware. Perhaps you think that you are very egoistical, some people think like that and that this is the ego, but mostly the, this, whatever ego you had is also finished because the way they were bumping at it, you see, so it is hurt ego and it may become a guilt within you, you say, oh, I should not have done this, I should not have done this, I should not have… No use worrying about these things, no use going back onto it. So because of this, you see, the left side, which is a very important side in Sahaja Yoga, is affected and it starts right from the Swadhisthana, in the Swadhisthana chakra. As I told you that I am going to tell you about your chakras, but more relating to the left side. Left side, as Gregor has written a book, Advent, in which he describes it as the sin against the mother. And the right side, he says, the sin against the father. Not the mother who has given you the birth, but the Shakti, the primordial mother, the power of God's love. Sin against her is the left side and sin against the father is the right side. So countries which are developing now like India, you see, they are trying to develop into your style. They are going to have plastics and nylons and everything, then they'll take to drugs, then they'll become hippies and then this will happen and then I'll have to give them realization before going all these circles, they are not going to listen to me, they don't want to short circuit it, you see, so let them go ahead with it. They are now developing, all these countries who are developing, they should come and see you and meet you and know what development has given you. This kind of material, <laughs> you are understanding this so well, and, but they will not. If you tell them that they can't believe it, you will be surprised when I go to India, I have to take nylon sarees for them. Though we get very beautiful silks in India, they don't think there's much about it, you see. They think, why don't you bring some uh, nylons for them? So this is what it is, you see, they don't understand. And this is the thing I told you that the Kundalini is in India, but they are not awakened. You people have realized the value of matter. You people have realized that matter doesn't give you the joy. You have to go beyond it, especially nylons and plastic. <laughs> At least this much you understand. But you go to any sophisticated uh, Indian family, they'll give you food in, in, in stainless steel. Though they may have brass, they think that, oh, stainless steel is great, you see. All the rich people will take out their stainless steel. Even if they will have silver, they think stainless steel is great. Can you imagine? So this is the state in which they are. While you have reached that stage where you do realize the aesthetics, the aesthetics of the matter, aesthetics of the matter, you understand. So you have in one side, on the right side, you have achieved quite a lot, I should say, and you should be confident on that style, at least that you understand the worthlessness of all these man-made things. That's something so great to achieve that you want to have something that is God-made. Once you come to that point, you should also know that if you have to have realization, it cannot be man-made, it has to be God-made. Now the left side, 
is important here, so I'll talk about left side, but you should not feel hurt about it because I have to point it out to you to understand the mistakes and the things which should not repeat it. But the right side mistakes are committed, as I told you, in the people who are developing. So I will mention you to do that part, what happens to the right side when we commit mistakes on the right side. What we do is to we don't believe that there is God who is your Father. You forget that there is Father above you and He is the one who is going to look after you. So you don't have to worry so much about earning money by any crooked method or by any means without any values. To earn money, to be worried about money, to be worried about your well-being is absurd. Krishna has said, yoga kshema vahamiham. He said you get your yoga, if you get to your yoga, then you get your kshema, means your well-being. The other day somebody asked me, what is the way to Lakshmi? It's first to get to your yoga. Why didn't he say kshema yoga? He said yoga kshema vahamiham, first yoga. First you get united with your divine force and then your well-being is looked after. It is looked after. Even if I tell you the stories of that, you won't believe to what extent it looks after your kshema also. You don't become Mr. Ford because that's madness. You become a person who is provided for, who is looked after and who never feels the dirt that there is no money with you. That's what his kshema is, in which your health improves, material things improve, everything improves once you have got yoga which is promised by Shri Krishna 6,000 years back. I am not saying something new, it was said about 6,000 years back. So you become a realized soul, by becoming a realized soul, you realize that your father, God Almighty, is the richest man in the whole world. He has everything. From where does it come? It comes from him. Riches that we think are riches are not really riches. The one he gives you, the one he provides you, are miracles. These are miraculous things. And when it happens, I'll give you one example for this. Like in London, you see, we, we didn't have any place for the boys to live in and girls to live in, they wanted to form an ashram. There was a lady who bought a place uh, because she had sold her place, she bought a place, a dilapidated, a ruined place in Lambeth Way. Of course, you'll be surprised that William Blake has said, because I laid the foundations there and it was, he said it, that the foundations will be laid in Lambeth Way. He said that uh, uh, England is going to become Jerusalem. And he said in Lambeth Way the foundations will be laid. Imagine this William Blake and his prophecies. I stayed first in Surrey Hills. He has written that the first beacons will be lit in Surrey Hills. Can you believe this man, how good he was in prophesying? Whatever it is, this uh, uh, ashram could only provide rooms for very few boys and girls and big problem for them. So they said, Mother, we have to have some more places to live in. What are we to do? I said, all right, now you pray for it. Just ask. And a boy came with an idea, we should form a co-op. So they were not willing to form a co-op. They said, Mother, it takes ten years to get a nice place in co-op. It's useless. I said, if he says so, just go ahead. So they formed the co-op. Can you believe within one month's time, they got a huge building with fifteen large bedrooms and big halls and all that for them to stay, paying only seventy pounds for the whole building in one week. Can you imagine? Then after a month they got a huge, big, very, very big hotel with all things there, beds and linen and cutlery and crockery and everything that you could think of, paying only seventy pounds per week for all such a huge big thing where about twenty-five people can easily live and they have got halls and basements and this and that. We had sixteen marriages on the Krishna Ashtami day and all these newly married couples stayed in that hotel very nicely, see, paying nothing because you don't need have to pay there. But these boys might have paid, I don't know what they did among themselves. But this is what it is. This is a kshema. And such a beautiful atmosphere in that place, everybody enjoying the pure knowledge and the pure love. Now we are on the left hand side and when I will discuss about the chakras, I'll be 
dealing, pertaining more to the left side and not to the right side, which is the side which we say is of material well-being or say, how do you get your physical well-being? You also get your physical well-being through this. Can you see, all of you? <coughs> now, as you see here, the first chakra is very important because you see the connection is established with the left hand. It's a very, very important center. It's the center of your innocence. The first thing God created on this earth was innocence. And this innocence is embodied in a deity whom we call as Sri Ganesha. This deity was created long, long time back, much before anything started on this earth, the Omega and Alpha as you can call it, and he incarnated on this earth as Lord Jesus Christ. I was told that I have to be careful because there are many people who just don't believe in Jesus Christ. This is a very big conditioning of people because they are born in families who don't want to believe in Christ. Whether you like it or not, He exists, not only He exists, but He is the only one who can really give us the path from here. So the first one, is the center of our innocence. And this center of innocence was kept there at a position where it manifests in the growth of our pelvic plexus, which looks after the excretion of the body. As there are four, uh, we can say, the petals of this subtle center, in the same way there are four subplexuses for the pelvic plexus. I don't know how many I have done medicine here, but the pelvic plexus has got four excretory subplexuses. One of them is responsible for sex. Now, the idea of sex that has come to us is from people like Mr. Say, Freud. Now, look at his life. What sort of a life he led? He had bad relations with his own mother. He is a perverted fellow. Secondly, see, look at his sense. In his own life, he should see the light of a person. Then, secondly, that he had cancer for years together and he died with cancer. So, physically, he was nonsensical, mentally, he was a pervert. Yes, I mean, you must see the person whom you try to follow, all right? So, it's so logical. Now, you see his life as it is. He, he taught you, oh, that if you try to condition yourself about sex and if you marry someone and you are married to one person and then you are attached, it's conditioning of the society. But he was half-baked <laughs> because you are not only your left side. See, if you say, now what's wrong? If I do this, what's wrong if I do that? What's wrong if I do that? If you go on like this, then you forget the other side, which is the ego, which is the ego side. And then the ego side develops, and then you can become a mad person. Then your sex can be a problem. Today the sex of modern people is such a problem. We should face it. Perhaps you do not know that what a percentage of American young people are important today. They are important. The more you become important, a vicious circle is created, and to you sex becomes so important that you think you have to become just a sex point. No more a human being, but a sex point, all the time you talk of sex, 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 sex. What is the need? It is such a simple thing. Every animal knows, everyone knows, nobody is given education about it. <laughs> In India, we never talk about it. We are producing much more children than you are producing it. <laughs> There's also another reason why we produce more children is 
the load has to be on us because children don't want to be born here. <laughs> the conditions are so bad in England, two children are killed, two children, can you believe it? Is announced, two children are killed every week by parents. I mean, I can't think of one parent in India who will do that, one. We have poverty, we have everything, but no mother can kill her own child. I mean, even if she has 12 children, she wouldn't mind. Mind is not the thing, she loves them. She can't afford to lose even one child out of them. I mean, it is another extreme we have, like we can even sell our country for our children's sake. We are to that limit. You see, some of the people who are so attached to their children that they don't mind. For their children's sake, they can sell their country. I mean, that's going to another extreme. But I must say that children would like to be born in India, not here. So we are carrying the load upon ourselves. But the main thing is our sex ideas are really being conditioned by this so-called deconditioner. When they say, do not condition yourself, actually they decondition you. They think, but they are conditioning you much more by saying, do this, do that. You see, sex, you don't have to run away from that. You don't have to get out from that, not at all. But sane ideas must be developed about sex and you have to lead a very good married life. Married life is the blessing, blessing of the Goddess on you. It's a Graha Lakshmi. The way you treat your women, the women treat you the way, I mean, it's a reaction. You see, the men treated them so shabbily, now the women are becoming mad here. I must say they are getting mad. You can't live without men. How can you live without them? It's impossible. If you think you can live without men, you are sadly mistaken. It's a wrong idea. You cannot. And men can't live without you. Now you might say there are people, I was amazed also, another amazing thing I heard was that 65 percent people in, in California are homosexual. It's something shocking, another thing it is, because it's perversion. Now why it happens? I had a boy in New York who came to me, who was like a boy, he had moustaches, everything, was talking like a woman, you know. I said, what's wrong with this fellow? First I didn't understand, you know. Then they told me, Mother, he's something like that, and this, that, and that, that. I said, all right. But actually he was possessed by a woman. He was possessed by a woman. I removed that possession and he said, now I look like, I feel like a man, and he started walking in a different way altogether. He changed his gait and everything and he was walking in a different way. Just imagine, it was just a position of a woman on him. So he was behaving like a woman and he was seeking a company of a man instead of a woman, which he should seek. That's a normal thing to do. And he became abnormal. Now when they became abnormal, nobody is there to protect him. Nobody is going to tell them that this is abnormal. This is nothing that you should say, this is sin, this is uh, illegal. Nobody is going to listen to that. If you tell human beings this is wrong, they will sit on your head. They will never do it. Never tell them this is wrong. Tell them this is right. Go ahead with it. When they suffer, they will come back. This is the way our modern society is working towards you. All right. You want homosexuality? Permit it. You want killing? Permit it. Whatever you want, you do it. I'll they have a feeling behind them that once you allow them to do what they like, either they'll be finished completely once for all, headache is gone, or once they realize they'll come back to normalcy. I think this must be the basics for everybody not going into it and finding out that 65 percent people are suffering from such an absurd thing, which is not at all joy-giving. It's never joy-giving. It's just ego pamper. Because some women told me, Mother, these men are so dominating and they are so horrid and that's why we should not have anything to do with them, all right? And they try to push us here and there and they try to harass us, so we have nothing to do with them. We'll have ladies together. I said, that's not the way. You should know how to handle them. <laughs> <laughs> they are very sweet. Oh, they are extremely sweet. You see, you should know how to handle them. They are like children, absolutely like children. But you have to be a real mother to understand them. They are so sweet, you can't imagine. They are extremely sweet and good people. 
shame about men, I would say, that the way they see the women are sort of dominating them and all that. There are ways of handling the women of that kind also. You can manage that. You see, you have forgotten the sweet methods of romance. You see, now the romance depends on the wig you wear. If a woman is wearing a particular type of a wig, the man falls in love. She changes the wig, the love is finished. <laughs> These kind of artificial ideas, if you have about your relationship with each other, if it is the hair you like, if it is the eyes you like and all that, it will, it will not last. But the feeling that we belong to each other, just we belong to each other and we have to love each other, then you don't see these defects in each other, you don't find these problems, not at all. I mean, you need not be with your husband all the time, but you enjoy the separation and then you enjoy also the meeting. It's not that if you are away from him then you are bored stiff, not at all. It's a very sweet thing that happens to you and can happen to all of you when you are realized. Once you are realized you come to such a normal position that the whole thing normalizes, you see, because that's an absolute point. That's the thing that takes away all your imbalances, all your problems and you really know what is love, what is in German, this Gregor. It's the one who came here, did all kinds of nonsensical things here, you know. The day he was saying, telling to me <laughs> the other day that, Mother, you are the master, uh, master of uh, putting all the pieces together in a very nice integrated manner. And it's true that it is the spirit in you, God does come. It just brings back everything that's all looking so ugly and so disintegrated into one beautiful form. And all the romances that you have heard of, now he is such a romance for his wife, you know, he's so romantic that nobody can believe that he's a modern man. A modern man is not supposed to be romantic about his wife, he can be romantic about anybody else's wife, but not his own. <laughs> so this is the absurdity of our ideas about love. This is, she's our, your own. Why not enjoy your own things? instead of enjoying somebody else's thing. Like in India, you see, supposing you get an Indian, he may be a tug, he may come to your house and run away with your things, you know, may run away with all your things that you have, can't do it. But if you get another one, a Western man in the house, he'll run away with your wife only. <laughs> you don't know what he will do. He'll talk very sweetly and run away with a wife and he will think, oh, I've done such a great thing, she loves me and he's not bothered as to the whole system of the family is finished, the whole thing is finished. Like we had one boy, a journalist, who was 26 year old and his friend was 24 year old and he invited the friend to his house, the mother was 48 year old and she ran away with the friend. <laughs> and four children were left behind and the, her father didn't know what to do, she had a divorce and she got the house divided, the children are thrown to places. I mean, this is absurd, how can you do it? And she came to me, oh, I'm in love with him, father. I said, this little boy who is younger to your son, how can you be in love? Are you mad? You must be mad to believe in such a thing. And the fellow was interested in her money perhaps, maybe. I don't know what he was interested, but they were in love, supposed to be in love. I don't know what sort of a love is this one. See, how can you be in love with your great-grandchildren? <laughs> it's absurd, you know, this is so absurd. You see these 80-year-old people trying to copy with you, going in a pub and dancing like you with the shaking hands and everything shaking and collapsing next moment. What is there to compete with these young children? You are grown up, you are matured, you are sensible, you are sane, enjoy them. It's a funny thing, you see, in these modernity we have gone very much away from reality, that's why we are away from joy and enjoyment. All right, so this is it, that sex it is to be used for its right purpose and to be used at its right point, means at the, at the muladhara. Christ said one thing, He said, it is written, thou shalt not commit adultery. I say thou shalt not have adulterous eyes, because He knew this would happen and He is placed at that point where He controls the eyes. Nowadays we have started doing sex with our eyes, this flirting business. What do you get out of it? Looking at this girl, looking at that girl, looking at this girl, that girl, what are you getting? Your eyes are ruined, your attention is ruined, you are finished and fagged up. And by the time you have seen twenty girls, you sit down and say, ah. 
this is the best way to age. And then you go to beauty clinics and try to look younger. See, what is the need to look at these girls like this? They are all your sisters. Have purity in your heart. There is no need to waste your attention so much. There is no need to waste your attention. For an Indian would be looking at the things and you will be looking at the women or the men. You finish your choice at a point. You finish it and enjoy it. Even in guru shopping you do the same thing. You have come to me now, I have told you the truth. But tomorrow another guru comes in, let's go and have a look. <laughs> if you have that kind of a frivolous idea about yourself, Sahaja Yoga is not going to work out in you. You have to settle down with it. You have to work it out. Your spirit is to be completely uncovered and is to be brought into complete consciousness of yours. You should really become the master. Unless and until you are master, you should not give in and don't go to these people just to look at them because you spoil your attention. So doing sex with your thinking leads you to impotency. If you have to eat food with your mouth, you start eating with your nose, the mouth will be finished because it's frozen and the nose will be finished too and you won't be eating either. Whatever things have to do, whatever ways, you should allow that organ to work out that thing. So that's why the spontaneity in sex is lost. You think about it, plan about How can you plan? I just can't understand. You plan about everything that is so spontaneous. And that's why there is such a problem. And people talk here as if sex is something out of the blue. It is just there, it exists, and you don't have to learn about it, it is all there and to talk about it also is not necessary, it is your own private. It's absolutely private and sacred thing between you and your wife, that's all. Nothing beyond, nothing before. It's a very sacred thing, the more sacred it is, the more you enjoy it. I have known people in India who are 90 years of age and still very potent. One gentleman came to tell me that, Mother, my wife has died and I'm still, I don't know. I said, it's all right. He said, how do you manage? I said, I told him, how do you manage? He said, I'm living in her separation, I'm living. That's how they live and they manage themselves. While here the people at a very young age just become exhausted and finished. So we have to understand that in Sahaja Yoga you try, it will work out, it works out also. Gradually your attention will be stationed, will be very much in the center and you will develop your innocence in such a beautiful manner. You get back your innocence in Sahaja can you believe? completely become so innocent and so simple that uh, you are amazed at yourself. Your innocence is there as far as money is concerned, no doubt. Still you are intact on that point. On that point Indians are not. You are innocent as far as material things are concerned. For example, you don't mind giving all the money to these horrible gurus as long as you get your realization. But there I think innocence is not stupidity. How can you give money for your realization? I mean, it's a simple thing, we must understand. You cannot pay money for your realization, one thing you must understand. Anybody who says, now I've got vibration, some people go to someone and feel heated up. Then they go on feeling heated up more and more and more. This heat is coming from that man and is going to increase your heat all the time. And it is going to increase and increase and increase and your chakras are going to be ruined completely by this fellow. It has to be reduced, it has to come to the cooling point and you must feel the cooling point. If you cannot feel the cooling point, then you must know that this man is absolutely wrong. Heat is not the sign of cleansing. When you are feeling heat here now, for example, it is because the thing cleansing is taking place. Once the cleansing is over, the cool breeze must blow in and you must feel the cool breeze. Now some people might feel absolutely cold just like frozen, that's also not a good sign. That means you're left-sided. Some of you may feel that kind of a thing. It's not the feeling, the cold is the point, it's the feeling, the cool breeze. It's a breeze-like feeling that you get from my photograph also you'll get. That's the way you have to judge yourself. You judge yourself, establish yourself, keep your chakras clean and you'll be amazed how you become a master of the whole art. You will be able to give realization, each one of you, to thousands of people. 
So now in the second chakra when we come, is I would say is the chakra of your seeking. We call that as the second chakra because the third chakra comes out of it. It's the chakra in which you seek. It starts from very, very beginning. When you were a human being, you did not realize that you came to this stage in thousands and thousands and thousands of years. First of all, as any animal, what you do is to seek God in food. You just seek food. You are seeking food, uh, you want to eat, and the whole thing is at Nabi level, is at this point where you are just seeking the food, how to nourish yourself, how to look after yourself. The second seeking later on starts, some of the animals start becoming more alert by understanding that you have to be more intelligent. So they start seeking uh, in power. They want to empower other animals and try to overcome them so that they can eat them, so they seek in power. Then the seeking goes even subtler and subtler, that they start seeking in money, as in human beings start seeking in money, in possessions and things. Animals don't have possessions, thank God, because possessions means headache, you have to have insurance, you have to have this, you have to have that. So the human beings start getting the possessions and all these things and they start going into this seeking. But the last and foremost seeking is of the very evolved is the seeking of the Spirit, the seeking of God. This is the real thing that should happen to us when you are at that point, at that point of maturity, then this happening takes place. Now, the other center that is coming out of that one is actually it's not shown here, but it comes out of that, is the center called as a Swadhisthana, is the center by which you think, you organize for the future, you think. You organize for the future. You work out your action through it. Like we think, 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 all the time what we do is nothing but think. I mean, planning is such a curse that we don't do anything about it. We just plan and keep it in the book. Or we have planned it. They think we have planned it, it's done already. It's not so. Now this thinking gives us a realm of future into which we enter in. When we start thinking, we do not know how we imbalance ourselves. In this area, this area resides the principle of the primordial masters, as Gregor has told you. Now when you start thinking, this center, the one you see, the yellow colored center, transforms the fat from your stomach for the use of your brain. Now people are so much against fat these days that it would be really dangerous to talk for it. <laughs> now, from where are you to get the replacement of your brain cells? Tell me, if you are not going to consume any fat. As it is, your livers are out, so whatever fat you take, you take any amount of fat, you will not have any weight. Try. Because that fat is the reserve for your brain which thinks all the time. You have to, you know, do you know that this brain is made of fat cells, do you know this or not? It's nothing but fat cells. In Sanskrit it's called as medha. And the whole thing is called as medha, even the brain. Even your nerves are made of the fat cells. Now when you don't take it, any form of fat, any form of fat whatsoever, I mean I'm told that lots of uh, butter is lying here with, I don't say, when I say I don't say you ate the mountain of it, no, no. What I'm saying, if you don't take at all any fat, then what you do is to make your body starve for the fat that is needed for one of the purposes is the brain and for your nerves. If you don't take fat in the body, you will be a nervous person. What is the supplement for your nerves? What are you going to supply? That's why you find, you see, mostly to make it out and Westerner and Indian is very easy. You make them stand before any calamity, all right? The Indian would be silently watching, the another would be going into complete, just, ah, oh, everything will be coming up. Or the eyes will be twisting, the nose will be going up and down, the ears will be going like that. They'll be all nervous. 
The reason is your nerves do not have any sustenance in it. That's lost because you just don't take any fat. Take little bit. Not I'm not saying the mountains. You see, if I say something, you may jump into the mountain of, <laughs> of fat. That's not the point. But just to avoid completely the fat is a wrong idea. Creates an imbalance. Now this pore center has to do double job. Firstly, it has to supply the fat to the brain. Secondly, it has to look after your liver on the right hand side. When it moves to the left hand side, your pancreas, your spleen, your kidneys and uterus. Can you imagine? All these things, this poor thing has to do. Now, if you are thinking, thinking, thinking all the time, then it is trying to find out all the fat, fat gobbles it can get from everywhere to supply them in the brain. All right. And if it does not get that, then it is a dangerous thing. But even if it gets it, then it is creating a problem for the other organs which it has to look after. That's how people get diabetes. You don't get diabetes because you eat sugar. It's a wrong idea altogether. I don't know from why the doctors have started this kind of a thing. For example, in India, people take sugars, at least half a kilo of sugar per day in the villages, at least minimum. They eat more sugar than they eat rice, take it from them. But nobody has diabetes. <laughs> Why? Because they don't think. <laughs> Whatever sugar they take is used for their liver. Now, if you do not give your liver any sugar, now ask anyone how the liver acts. Liver is the one that takes out all your poison. Now, this poison is to be taken out of the liver by water. Now, if you take the water and drink on top of that, what happens? That the hydrogen becomes heavier. I mean, there's H3 added to it, and the whole system of H2O, which has to be neutral, becomes like this, and you can't receive any heat into it. So the whole heat, which is the poison, accumulates in the liver. You get all kinds of liver problems, all kinds of liver problems. Practically, most of the Western people have liver problems, but they don't know it till they discover till they are absolutely on the verge of something very fatal, they do not discover about liver. Now this hydrogen which pulls it down, you see, becomes like an arrow, doesn't receive anything from the liver, the heat. And the, such a person never gets any temperature. Even cancer acts the same way. In cancer also the H goes down very much, though it's a left-sided problem, which I'll tell you. But same thing happens, that the heat of the body cannot be taken out by water. So the water becomes a heavy water, you can say. But after realization, the hydrogen goes up like that, and you receive all the heat. And people who have bad liver feel terrible heat on the right hand side. Now you have to take carbohydrates to neutralize that heat. You have to take carbohydrates. Now, if you don't like sugar, eat rice. I mean, if there's some sort of a thing on your head. This also is an enterprise. I must tell you, these food stores are also another enterprise, which is very, very subtle. Very subtle enterprise. You see, as you had other enterprises of gurus, then you had of holidays, you see. Some idea must have come. Then these hip, what you were there? Singers, musicians, were there four of them? Beatles. You know, the one who created them, Beatles, his uncle has told me the story how he did it. It was all maneuvering to begin with. And that maneuvering made people mad. And th that madness is still on. You see, people go on into that. It's all auto suggestion and all those things. They work it out. They're psychologists, you see. And they know how to maneuver people and how to dominate them. They know. And they manage it. They work it out on your weaknesses, like you do not know about food. Now, some of the health food. I ate, it was not for human beings, it's not for buffaloes, I felt. <laughs> really, some of the foods were so hard and so harsh, I got such a pain in my stomach, I said, no, this is not for human beings, this is for buffaloes, you are not buffaloes, 
<coughs> you are a human being. You have to eat food which is digestible to your stomach. Of course, that doesn't mean you should use, use this white bread. Of course, that is not the thing which makes your uh, liver completely sort of, or you can say the intestine sluggish. But you should not eat all the fodder of such a hard things like everything you cut because you want to preserve the vitamins. You will cut everything and eat everything like that. Japanese are the worst on this. Japanese are the worst. I mean, there's nothing that they don't eat. They eat everything that you could think of. I mean, you can't eat their food the way they eat. First thing they served me as a, on a very special banquet where the princess was there and all that was a shell with all these moss around it. See, for us Indians, as it is, they're a little fussy about the things. <laughs> and my daughter said that. I said, what is in there? It's a say, live thing. I said, live? We were all frightened. Oh, what is live? They said, now oyster or something is live inside. And they poked it and it started going like that, you see. I said, oh God, how do you eat it? And the Japanese just twisted it on and ate it off, you see. And they eat everything raw. There was a boy who was eating peanuts. We asked him, what are you eating? He said, I'm eating these uh, prawns. He was just feeling them out and eating them. I said, can you imagine? This is the way they eat their food, which is not meant for the human body. You have to cook, but your women are so busy, busy with liberation, they don't cook. <laughs> they don't cook. You should learn to cook to handle your husband. You see, if you know how to cook, it's very simple. <laughs> In our Sahaja Yoga Center, we teach them how to cook, because if you know cook, you are the master. You see, people are, men are really so simple. <laughs> I mean, really so <laughs> I cook very well. I'm an excellent cook, I should say. But a gentleman came to see me, he was a German, and he told me that there was one chairman of a co company that he told me, if you want to eat the best chicken, ask Mrs. Srivastava to cook for it. That's my another name. And she's an excellent cook. I was surprised I had this reputation all over that I cook so well with chicken. And he came all the way, you see, and he brought the chicken with him. And he came all the way to cook with me and to eat it. And he was a very big man also himself. I was amazed, you see, that just to learn how to cook the chicken. He said, my wife doesn't know how to cook. Just imagine how helpless he was. All men are helpless as far as food is concerned. If you give them good food, you see, they may say, oh, we can eat whatever we like, but it's not so. If you know their tastes and things and if you know how to handle them, it's very easy to handle them. Like somebody told me, Indian men are very great cowards. I said, why? Because they don't know how to cook, that's why they don't divorce. <laughs> Imagine to say such a thing. It's not that. They are very wise. What's this of changing every day a wife, you see? One wife, is, she knows all about your habits, she knows everything, she knows how to cook for you. It's a good idea we carry on very well as companions. Every time if you change, God knows she may come as a shrew, she may come as anything. You may lose your head with somebody, another may break your hand, another may break your legs. It's better to know one and handle her for this lifetime. So next time at least you don't face that time. <laughs> it's very simple and wise way of living together to understand that in one lifetime only if you live with one person, you develop that love, that attention, that understanding, because human beings basically are very good. If you live with somebody for two days, you will just see the superficial things of that person. That may not be good. So to get to the depth of a person, it's necessary you live with that person with a loving care, you see that person and you will discover how beautiful that person is. He is so beautiful sometimes that you are surprised at you. The other day I had to go for something to a hospital. I mean, I never go to a hospital, but something happened and doctors were after my life, you must do this, you must do that. And my husband couldn't see that. He was so upset, he had never seen me like that. So he went back to his office, he put his head like this, and he was sitting there, didn't do any work and anything. But when he came back, I was angry with him. I said, what do you mean by not being here? I was here and there were other people. And But actually I knew what he was doing. So I went and told him, I know you ran away, you coward, you couldn't stand it. He said, it's true, you know, I couldn't see it. And then his secretary told me, oh boy, he was horrid. He wouldn't talk to me, he wouldn't allow me to do anything. That's what happened. So to understand a man, it's such a great thing to love. I don't know if you realize that. It's such a great thing to love, to give. It's much greater than to have. Giving, I don't know if you have tried or not. All my life I've done nothing but giving. And I think I feel so happy about it. 
the re real source of happiness lies in giving only, not in taking it anymore. It's such a great thing to give, 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 and you'd be amazed you have no dust of anything. That is what one has to understand. But to think about what things I should preserve, what things I should give, what is there to think? If somebody likes to have it, doesn't matter. It works out. Now, the second uh, center is also of the Lakshmi center because you asked me how to get the Lakshmi. Now, this is the center of Lakshmi because Lakshmi is the deity of the center, and the deity actually who is the male side of it, with the one who is the kinetic side. The power is the potential side and the kinetic side is the male side. So Lakshmi is the power of Narayana. Narayana is the deity whom you call as Vishnu. That's why Vishnu only incarnates. Because he comes for our seeking, he incarnates. He incarnates to give us our higher awareness. Always the Vishnu incarnates or the aspects of Vishnu incarnate. And that's how we have been evolving one after another. For example, when Noah's ark was built, it was Vishnu who came in the form of a dolphin fish and saved that Noah's ark. And that's how we were saved. Then a tortoise form it came in to make the fishes come to the shore and start crawling on the mother earth. Like that, a leader is always born, and that leader is the aspect of God, is the incarnation. Now many will say we don't believe in it. So many are like that. We don't believe in this, don't believe in that, don't believe in that. We believe in this and believe in this. Now how can you say that? First of all, know that you say this because you are conditioned for something, you are, have a fixation. When you say I believe in it or you say I don't believe in it, you have not reached your absolute awareness, have you? How can you judge? You cannot judge. So you have to become that. Once you become that, you just put your hands and ask the question. Was Vishnu an incarnation? Was it the aspect of incarnation that gives us our realization? You will start getting more breeze and more breeze, and then you will know that it is so. But this fact about Vishnu, that he exists, you will only know after your realization. When you raise the Kundalini, and if the Kundalini stops at this point of Nabhi, then you have to take his name. If you don't take his name, it won't rise. That's why the mantra is a very big science, to know, first of all, how the Kundalini is moving. You can say the mantra is like, to give it very gross example, is like a toll that you pay at every point. So when you go up to a gate, now you have to pass through that, then you pay a toll. But somebody gives you a mantra before realization, it has no meaning, because you have not started moving as yet. If your car has not started moving at a, as yet, how can you pay the toll? Whom are you paying the toll? You are just paying the toll to the Guru, who is not sensible. You have to go to that point where your Kundalini has stopped, which you can see yourself and feel it. And then at that point, you have to raise the Kundalini higher by saying that particular mantra, then at higher level, then at higher level. How the mantra is to be said, there's a science. This all can become yours in no time at all. And within one month's time, you all will be experts of Sahaja Yoga. Take it from me. When I went to America, uh, Australia, I was hardly there for a month, I think. And uh, within 15 days, see, they, these people from television and all that, they came to see me. And they said, are your disciples all scholars? I said, not at all. Who told you that I have got? Oh, they know so much. I said, because they have become knowledge now. You start learning from others when you start giving Kundalini, awakening and all that. You start learning what's happening, where is it going, how it is working out, how to maneuver. Unless and until you start driving the car, how will you become the master of the car? In the same way, you have to know everything, working it out, not thinking about it. Then people start analyzing, how can this be, how can that be? It's not analysis. It's actual working. Actually, you work it out, the thing flows from your hand, and you are amazed, oh God, the Kundalini is rising. Yes, you can see, it's come up. You can give realization, those who got realization yesterday, today you can give that. What do you say to that? You are that fantastic. You are that fantastic. But know that you should not be shifty people. They say that Americans are very, very shifty people. And be careful on this character. See, everybody has a sign. 
Like that, you have a sign that you are shifty, while English are hard nuts. So be careful. Do not be shifty. Settle down on your own spirit. Work it out. Learn about it and fix it up. I am happy to see Michael has come all the way from Los Angeles. I was sorry I couldn't bring you the other day. I was feeling very sorry and to see you here, I was so heartened and so happy that you have come here to work it out. You see, that's how it should be. <coughs> all right. So then we go, I mean, there's so much to be said about every center. Uh, I, you know that I have given at least 500 lectures in London alone and there are tapes of my lectures is available. I mean, we don't make any profits as usual, but you must not also exploit us by taking the free tapes. You should pay for the tape itself, all right, the price of the tapes. And you can get the tapes from these people. We'll send you, you can copy it and give it to others the way you want to spread it, you can do it. There's no restriction on anything. But one thing is definite, that you should not sell it at a profit. As I do not sell it for profit, you also don't sell it for profit. There is no exploitation of the disciple and no exploitation of the poor guru who is standing before you. <laughs> now, so we go to the another center, which is very important within us, is the center. I don't think I'll be able to finish it today, the whole thing, but I, at this point I'll stop and tomorrow I'll talk about these two other centers and the spirit, all right? Tonight. To, tonight. I'm sorry, tonight. Tonight. So this center is the center of heart. Here the Jagadamba, the mother of the universe resides. The one who is alone, she is alone. She, she doesn't have any male deity with her. She's alone. She's the mother. And she looks after the people who are struggling in this ocean of illusion. She's the one who is the protector. She incarnates. It's said that she has incarnated thousand times, but she has incarnated many a time. Now this Jagadamba is the one who resides there at that point. And when you are a child, say about 12 years of age, she creates the antibodies in the sternum bone, and these antibodies spread into the whole body and protect you from the outer problems. Now those people who have the problem of this, especially in ladies, comes from insecurities in life. If you are insecure, then you get the palpitation, and such women at the extreme can develop breast cancer. If you can re-establish this, breast cancer can be cured in no time. Now, the other centre which are important in this is of the father and the mother on both the sides. Now, the father is on the right-hand side, is governed by Sri Rama. Sri Rama and Sita, who came on this earth, they are not standing in the centre, so you can see it very clearly that they are not worried about the evolution part of it, but they came on this earth to establish the right conduct of a person, especially in the political and economic field of life. How to be an ideal, a philosopher or you can say a benevolent king? He tried to establish the symbol of that, Sri Rama, and those people who suffer from father's problem. Supposing the father has died very early, they have this problem. And the symptoms of that is you get asthmas, you develop asthmas, if you have any problem of the father. If your father has died early or your father is torturing you or you have no respect for your father, if you are a bad father, I mean the fatherhood itself, when it is challenged, you get these problems and asthma develops. Asthma, uh, what you call that, a breathing trouble develops. It could be with the combination of that, right side, heart and also we should be, but mostly it is the right side heart. It could combine with the Vishuddha. Now, the left hand side is the mother's thing, is the Parvati, is the wife of Sadashiva, which resides there in her form as a mother, Annapurna, or she's the one who is the giver of food. She gives you food. When she is in you, you find that if you cook for two people, it will last for as many as who want to eat there. It's like that. This is the deity that comes when it is awakened, it works out. Now, when the, this Swadhisthana Chakra is governed by Brahma Deva and Saraswati, those who are students, for them it is essential to get this because they are the gods and goddesses of your arts, 
like music, dancing and all those things. Also, they give you the power of truth in the sense that uh, if you have a good sadhisthana, then if you say something, it comes out true. Your vani means your tongue, your vani voice, your tongues that you speak becomes the truth, is the power of this one. With the Lakshmi Tattva, as I told you, you get your affluence. Wherever you go, you bring affluence. You go to any house, people get affluence. You touch anything, people become better off. All the problems go out. And if you have problems on this, you, whatever you may try, you will never get rich. It will be always be a problem and you'll have sort of losses and things like that. Now the left side Vishuddhi is the Vishuddhi uh, Nabi, which you catch very often here because of trucks. Now I must warn you that left side Nabi gives you also a problem with money, always with money. Because if you have got left side problem, the Lakshmi just disappears, she just disappears. If you go more on to the left hand side, it is even worse. So alcoholism and all these things take you to a state where you start losing money and you bec can become very much poor with that. So the poverty comes in with that kind of thing. The right side Nabi is the one that gives you liver problems and gives you a very dominating nature maybe or a temperament by which you get very much angry. Left side Nabi has another very serious problem, which is a very serious one, where if your uh, spleen gets affected, for example, people who are very jerky tired, they have having their food, then they are running to the world. This can happen to the people who are right-sided also, because they are very speedy people, they are working, and then they want to eat the food at the same time, think about something, they will attend to many things at the same time. And this um, spleen has to look after all the emergencies and has to supply the blood cells. Because of this kind of a frantic temperament of the person, what happens, the, the spleen becomes frantic, and then the serious disease like blood cancer comes in. More or on, this is nothing, because there's an antichrist who has come in this country, settled down here. He's a regular 666 who gives you also blood cancer. So it's a very serious thing. And all these things only takes place when you are not aware of it, you do not know. It can be cured completely with Sahaja Yoga, no doubt. It can be cured by your Kundalini awakening. That's the only way you can cure Sahaja Yoga. There's no other way out. But you have to first of all know how to manage your Kundalini, how to raise it, but the first thing you have to do is to give up some of your fixations you have, because you, it's a new venue you are entering into. And like any scientist, you should keep yourself open, absolutely open, and see for yourself, and know for yourself that you have to understand everything, everything in such a way that it should be logical. It should be logical and through your vibratory awareness, not by your thinking. First you have understand it and logically you will see it is true. So it is you who judge yourself, it is you who understand everything, it is you who grow and it is you, the one who grows, sees also things. So I leave it to you, all these things to happen to you with, in your own wisdom and in your own freedom, all these things should be done. But just now I won't say don't do this and don't do that, you'll just give up, just like that. Because once you find your spirit, you are never bored, you have no time, you are enjoying yourself so much, you have no time for anything, even for smoking you forget. That's how, I am a very tricky person. I said, no use telling them don't do, otherwise they'll never come to my programs. Let them come and then I'll manage. Then you start really saving money on these nonsensical things, nonsensical habits that you have got, you want to get rid of them, it just works out. So for the time being, I think today is all right, but in the evening time I'll tell you all the rest of it. And we have got luckily here two persons who have agreed to stay. She was in London and Michael was with me, uh, who are deciding to stay in Santa Cruz. It is she who brought me here. It is she who gave all this idea. And it is now her responsibility to see that you are put onto the right path and that without challenging your ego she should do it, because it can be dangerous also. So, because she is one of you, so you may not like it, her telling you something, so don't mind. You will become like her also. Don't feel that there's something aggressive about her. That is very important, because with me it's all right, because first of all I'm a mother, 
and also I'm something different. Uh, but for her, you will think she's just like you. So doesn't matter. You will become like her, and you will can also give realization to many. Thank you very much. So any questions? I'll answer. Yeah. When you were talking about the second chakra, you talked about the one that's green there? No. The one that is yellow colored, you see, which gives us the bark, or the second chakra. But it goes round. You know, it's like a lotus. Uh, have you seen a lotus, sir? It was almost, which has got a stalk. The stalk is in the third chakra, comes out of there. And it goes round all over, it supplies everywhere, it can bend down. So this is the chakra, which is flexible one. Sadhishtha, which, which is actually the star, star of David, the star of David is the one which Moses and all these things, they have built it up. All that, this crossing of this represents the crossing of Moses also, the river that he crossed, or the sea you can say. All that is represented here, by, because it's the sea of illusion you cross, it's the work of Moses himself. A star of David. Yes. Will you explain the difference between self consciousness and self realization? The difference between self consciousness and self realization. I don't know what is self consciousness. But self realization and self knowledge is the same. But self-consciousness, what I learned, my, my own Indian English, I would say, is that you are very conscious of yourself, that you are very particular about your body and you are... There's another word for that in English language, is that vanity? Something. That's different. Self-knowledge, atma-bodha, knowledge of the self. One by one, all right. Just one, one here, one there, then. All right. Huh. Last night I went home. I was here last night, and I went home and did as you told me to. And I went to bed to go to sleep, and it was terrifying. <laughs> Why? What happened? Well, I was having nightmares. No, oh, yes, you may. In the uh, first day you may have, because see there are spirits around, and they will try to dissuade. What came was um, an image of my mother, and she was she it was it was her, she was um, killing herself. Your mother? Yeah. It can be anything. You see, what happens sometimes when you sleep? I mean, you must have had first of all a very deep sleep. That's one thing happens. But when you come out of that sleep, sometimes you pass through your subconscious area in the beginning, and the Impressions that you have had in your sushupti, you see the deeper things, do not, are not there. But you just remember what you have seen in your present subconscious mind, you see, and you touch that. But afterwards you get rid of it, no problem. It happens. Also, I want to ask you a question about, um, you said last night about drinking, and when people are uh, become alcoholics, are they... Uh, possessed by negative forces? They could be, very much. Okay. Because they go to the left side. You see, if you drink, you go to the left side. You are in a vulnerable state then, because you enter into an area which is unknown to you, is the collective subconscious. And people can attack you, see, which is possible. Like Michael himself will tell you, he was, after realization, he started seeing them the way they were there. He could see them. And then he could fight them better, because if you become something else, you can find them better. Otherwise they are in you, till you become mad, you don't know, they are there. Also, is that passed on from mother to child? Very much. Very much. Very much, no doubt. You see, you share them even from your friends sometimes. That's what people don't know when they deal with other psyches and things like that, they don't know that there is a way of protecting yourself from this. You have to protect. It's very subtle. They are just like diseases. They, they spread and they can attack you. They can get into you. It's very simple. It happens. 
Like I'll tell you, he and his wife, now they, they just announced their marriage. And she had been to some clairvoyances and all that. They were all in her, she didn't know. She got the realization of that. The day the marriage was announced, they couldn't bear it, that happiness of the of his wife, you see. So they all came back on her. And she got so possessed, she started looking like a man, talking like a man. It was a big problem. They had to come to London to get it all right. Yes, they are there. You can fight it out. No, no difference. We know the method of doing it, all right? So just don't worry, it will all Yeah, one by one. Now, yes. you gentlemen, what have you to say? Um, yesterday you talked about uh, your body as the temple of God, and uh, I'm noticing that you're drinking Coca-Cola. Oh. I'd like you to comment on what, what is it that you like about it's Coca-Cola? It's perfectly all right with me. I can even take poison. No problem. You don't compare yourself with me, all right? <laughs> I, I have to take poison also. I am so... I have to do all these things. So don't compare yourself with me. But this Coca-Cola is not so bad as people talk, I can tell you. It used to be very bad before that they were making about, say, two years back. I couldn't take that. But there's nothing wrong with it. I think it's sort of a... Also, I feel, I don't know, but maybe some sort of a enmity is sort of an enmity that it is very popular, maybe people are trying to say something. Because nothing goes wrong with me when I take it. If it was poison, I would know it's poison. But there's nothing so wrong with it. Because, you see, I, I don't know, whatever they give me, I drink, I don't mind. But of course, not the alcohol. Even if I take alcohol, nothing will happen to me, but I would not take it. Because I don't need it at all. I'm already in the spirits. <laughs> I don't need it. But now we take it. That's, I don't think that's wrong in this Coca-Cola. It used to be bad once upon a time, I would say, about a year back or so. I never liked it. But now I, li I don't mind because I, something they had it in it, it have removed. There was some sort it's of too expensive punishment. to put cocaine in it now. Ah, now I don't think they put any <laughs> cocaine. Oh, they must be, they must be putting cocaine. They used to. Ah, now this is it, all right? So there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> the <commercial. Okay. laughs> yeah. ah. they must. Yes, yes, now how many questions? The, the fellow there, yes. Mm. No, no, this one is first of all. Which one? Okay. Because I, told you. Ah. Uh, I was wondering uh, how is it best to cook the seeds of delusion or will the Kundalini take care of that on its own? How is it? <laughs> how do you get rid of the seeds of delusion? Yes. Mm. He says how to get rid of the seeds of delusion. Uh, will Kundalini look after that? Of course, of course. That's what I'm saying. Once the light comes in, well, that all goes out. If the darkness goes out, you will be amazed. <laughs> yes, it's true. Yes. Now, what's it, Michael? Now you have asked me so many questions before. <laughs> Still on, huh? Eh? Let the others ask. Now, what is it? You can come home and ask me now. Huh? What yes. is it? Yes? Pardon? To you? No, that she, that Mataji manifests herself in dreams. Dream. Do you manifest yourself in dreams? You see it. She understood. I don't know what I should say. I do so many things I cannot confess them to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it has to be done. What to do? There's some way of Communicating your uh, your uh, television wouldn't uh, take me on. <laughs> okay, right. so I'll give you some tricks. <coughs> it's true. It's true. What? Is it? Um, this is the first time I'm uh, being introduced to the uh, the Kundalini or chakra or whatever I want to speak vocabulary. Is there any... Yes, we have books. You can um, see that. Not, not only that. Is there another, in, say, in Christian or in Muslim, is there a similar thing as this in... In, in, the, in the Bible? Yeah. Sure. Yes, it is. Bible is a very concise form of every information, you see, and very mysterious. It was kept mysterious because whatever Christ said, you crucified him for that even. He was not even given any chance to talk. So he has said it. But the, as he said, I will appear before you like tons of flames. He said also the fire, the tree of fire. But only one word, tree of, tree of, now you better find out about it. That's what it meant. 
All right? So many things that Christ has said, you will see that in your ascent. You'll find it. It's all there. The Alpha and Omega, everything, everything that he said is helpful. Even his mantra we use, Lord's Prayer is used for opening this center. Nobody has any other question. I have another one. Uh, but someone has there. Oh, okay. That's her. Now, who is the person? Ah, you too. Ah. I have a question. Um, coming out of a place of isolation and wanting to find some What she say? Well, the isolation in society is keeping her away from... On the other hand, she feels the need to come back into society. Of course, I'm saying the same thing. Why should you isolate? You are the part and parcel of the whole. There's no need to isolate from your society. Only the commerce would isolate. You have to fight in the society itself. Do you know I'm a married woman? I've got my grandchildren. I've got my husband. On the other side, I'm very busy, extremely busy. This time I went from New York, halfway from my, halfway I did my work then went to New York because my husband was having a very big reception and I shook hands with 680 people standing in the doorway. And then I was back again in New York doing my work. So I'm earning my living by doing all shake hands. I find it exhausting to, um, I get exhausting. Before realization it is not after. You see, because before realization you are not integrated. After realization, what happens? Your spirit is the one that fulfills all your needs of your vitality and everything. He'll tell you how to feed that, all right? You will never be exhausted. It's in an inexhaustible force that is running in. Yes, Vaishya? In your fabulous realization happen, are you Shakti What is it? In your path, how does realization happen? Are you Shaktipat? <laughs> uh, you see, if you ask these questions, I'll have to tell you something, which I do not know if I should tell you. Because in fact, one has to learn that whatever people try to tell, they were murdered and killed and, and also crucified. But I'm doing something great, must be. <laughs> What you can think about me also, better you discover it yourself. Because if I tell you, then first of all, it may, that you may shun me. And it could be quite different. But let me appear before you as you are. I'm just like you, for example, for the time, all right? But must be something about me, isn't it? Have to be. But you, it's better that we are congenial to each other and understand each other at the same level, all right? Do you do that at the end of the program? What is no. the program? Do you do it at the end of the program? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. But don't call it by any name, all right? Otherwise, uh, it could be compared with other things. Like people have started doing Shakti Path. Any big Tom and Hari is doing that. Yes. My energy has changed completely I just felt really light and weightless. That's and almost as if my body could just disappear entirely. Almost that's ability to be invisible. And when I was being attacked, I couldn't feel it into my body the way that energy would have come in before. What did she say? Well, she's just describing her experience since realization last night, that she feels very light, that she feels that any attack she can be shunning off. But in any case, we'll tell you how to avoid any more problems, all right? How to get out of your house completely protected and how to put your attention on your spirit because that will give you dynamic powers. I mean, dynamic powers, absolutely dynamic. You don't have to uh, become reclusive, nothing. You are not going to be frightened of anyone. Ah. Yes? Mataji, uh, I've been 
been hitchhiking around the country since 1969 and sort of being a sadhu, self-made sadhu. And uh, yeah. I feel like I don't belong to the nationalistic countries and nations, and I feel like a prisoner here. Oh, I see. And uh, I would like to know if there's anywhere on the face of this earth that, that people can live in freedom from, uh, from the nation. <laughs> if we do not choose to, to live the way that society lives. Well, he's, he's been a self-made sadhu wandering through the U.S. and he doesn't feel part of this society. He wants to know, is there anywhere in the world where you can feel a part of society? No, I don't want to be a part My of My child. No? Sorry? I agree, Sorry, I agree just a moment. You that you, you feel that way, you see, because of certain things which are in you. No doubt I understand that point very well. But you'll be amazed when you will see that in this society only, we are going to create a new society. How can you leave your brothers and sisters? And I can tell you to come to India. All right, you come along. We'll have. We will have some place in India also for all of you to come down and stay there. But who is going to look after the people here? Now in London we are having good Sir Jogi and Tracy would have been very happy to be there. But I told her what about the people in Santa Cruz? And you'll be amazed. It will be all changed. The same people you'll find them great. Same people. They are all very great. You have to just discover tomorrow I'll Tonight I will tell you about America, how great it is, all right? Tonight. Tonight. If I was not aware of its greatness, I would not have come to this country. Why should I come? Yes. How best to continue with your teaching if we can't come tonight? What is it? How best to continue with your teachings if he can't come tonight? She is going to be here. Better to be here if possible, because there are books that, you see, it is something that has to be practiced in every day-to-day -day life, you see, with your friends and things, and it's things that grows within yourself. It is not any teaching as such, it is the growth that will take place. Can I just make a, an announcement? Oh. But we have circulated a pad where oh. they... Oh. Sorry, one second. We have been circulating a pad so that everybody who is interested can put his address, so that we can get in touch with you again, with your telephone number. Where is this pad now? Has it reached the end no, it of the crowd? It, hasn't it has not circulated. So please, uh, it will stay with Harry. Uh, with, with Harry, will you please get up there so that people can see you? Okay. And before leaving, please leave your address and phone number. And if you can't come, come this evening, we'll go back to you. Are you okay? all right? Yes. I mean, just practically That's in short yes. words. Good. Now you don't do those exercises, all right? Yeah. Yes, you'll be all right. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, right now in this country we have some very powerful men who have the ability in their hands to destroy all the planet through nuclear warfare. It's as if they are deluded by demons. And I would like to know what is the role of the yogi teacher in representing the yoga of light to these people? What did you say? Well, we've got very powerful people here in America, mm. uh, and he's worried about the, the power that these people have. He's likening them perhaps to demons, and he wants to know what in yoga and in yogic terms we can do about it. As I told you yesterday, leave them to me. All right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I have dealt them there with them, all of them. I know how to deal with them. Everybody is getting sick. <laughs> That's the beginning. Huh? Yes? I also heard that uh, great yogis have incarnated in America. What do you think? Say again. Great. I also have heard that great yogis from Past have incarnated in America now. He's also heard that great yogis from the past have taken birth here in America. Yes, it's true. Young children. You see, one is guarding outside. <laughs> <laughs> your daughter again, the one who was sitting on your lap. Yeah. Ah, tremendous, isn't she? Yeah. Okay, grown-up lady. See, looking at everyone. 
Yesterday those two girls who walked in, this one coming in now. Oh yes, yes, very great people are born, no doubt, no doubt about it. You should become a father of one of them if you want to. All right, good idea. So we have to have good married life, first of all. You see, they won't be married to people who do not have good married life, isn't it? So that we have to have first of all. So the second stage would be to marry you all. <laughs> Yes. The man in my life and I would like to be able to dream together, find ourselves, each other, in our dreams, and have a dream together. How can we do that? What she did. <laughs> the man in her life and she want to be able to dream together, see each other together in dreams. Why, you don't uh, are together in reality? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that is the dream itself. <laughs> reality looks like a dream, you know? It's so beautiful. <coughs> Best thing is to be in reality, everything in reality, in present, every moment. Every moment of life is dynamic. We don't live in the present, we live in the past or in the future. This would be living in the past or in the future. Just enjoy what you have. But that cannot, I cannot just say that, it is happening again, I would say it's happening. I cannot just say you'll be in the present, it won't work out, it's a brainwashing there. No, it has to happen. Right? Yes? Uh, what's the best way to uh, work with our parents, maybe who are really concerned about us and, and laying, are being a little interfering in our lives or whatever? What's the best way to deal with parents like that? With parents? What is the best way to deal with them if they're perhaps interfering a little in their lives? How to handle them? I'll tell you how to spread the magic of love, all right? I'll tell you. There is a way of putting a magic wand of love. It's very simple, very simple. We can work it out. They'll come around, after all, they are all human beings. If they are devils, they'll forget. But if they are human beings, so they'll all come around. No problem. Yes? How can we tell if there's, if there's, you said demon set? Yeah. How can we tell if they're demon set or not? Sometimes it sure appears that way. How can you tell the difference between them, the devils and the good When people? you get discrimination power in your hands, you see, you start feeling the vibrations. And demonic people give you blisters on your hands, actual blisters. Heat. Not only heat, but blisters. Sometimes they give horrible blisters, and if you see their eyes, a demon's eye, the pupil of the eye just disappears, just like a cat's eye. Have you seen a cat's eye? The pupil disappears. Even as a pupil. They, they look very powerful in their eyes, you see, sort of hypnotic. But if you look at them steadily, their eyes will disappear. Sometimes if you touch them, they will faint. Yeah, not about. Okay. Um, I, I want to continue hearing about the second coming of Jesus and Bible prophecy and how accurate that is because you mentioned the Antichrist. And I have this definite feeling that something very heavy is going to happen. And a lot of people feel it's going to be like a heaven on earth, but there will be a massive destruction first. And maybe Jesus will only be um, a mental hallucination that he will not really return, but I have a sense that something is going It's to correct. You say it's going to happen, but don't ask for it just now. Let us work it out. See, let's say um, as many as we can. It is going to happen. It has to happen. The last sorting out, then nobody is going to tell you, comfort you, redeem you, nothing. It's just going to happen, the last sorting out. You see, so we are just to enter into the kingdom of God, then we knock our doors and we'll be happy. <laughs> All right, so don't worry about the destruction. The rest of it, whatever is to be destroyed, has to be destroyed. But that's not you, by any chance. Yes? I've been taught that um, in your spirit, in my spiritual life, that uh, in all our spiritual lives, there is a difference in your handedness. Say, you know, left handed people think a little different than right handed people. I was wondering if in your teachings, there is 
any difference in the handedness of people or does it have any bearing? Does the left handedness or right handedness of a person have any effect? I mean, when you are left handed or right handed, you mean to say? Yes. No, no, no. Does it have any difference with. No, no, not at all. No. But you see, the left handed, right handed, and the central part, three things are there, but it's a permutation and combination. The human beings are made of permutations and combinations of these three gunas. You see, these are three gunas, the three moods of which we are made of, but the permutations and combinations of that. <coughs> so, but this left handedness of physical side, you mean to say, has nothing to do. All right? You don't. When you talk about left and right side, I assume you're talking about the opposite brain hemisphere. Yes. You see here, the yeah. ego and the super ego. I mean, absolutely nobody is left handed and absolutely nobody is right handed. But by our habits and methods, we go more to the left or to the right. You see, that's our style is to go to some extremes we go, and that's how we are. When you say to the left side, you're talking about the right brain. Yeah. Yes, of course, of course, the right brain. It goes to the right side, but it is actually placed on the more on the back side. From here, it starts more on the back side. And the, and the right sided one, though it is placed here, it's placed like that. Somebody who hasn't asked one, just a few more. Somebody who hasn't asked. Several places in the Bible, um, Jesus referred to a return, and I don't know if uh, the scriptures uh, are explicit in, in calling it the second coming, but on the Mount of Olives, he told his disciples that um, many shall come in his name, claiming to be him and many will be deceived. Brother will turn against brother, and nation against nation, and you'll hear wars and rumors of wars, and there'll be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Uh, see that you're not troubled by these things, for they must needs be. Uh, it says many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many, and were it possible, even the very elect of you. Mm -hmm. He's just quoting from the Bible. I'm quoting from Matthew 24, Mark 13, and I believe it's Luke 7 also. Uh, references to uh, something cataclysmic and the return of the Son of Man, who shall come with great power and glory. Eleven, eleven like rudras, you see? The they are called as eleven rudras. These eleven powers of destruction are called as eleven rudras, which I will tell you tomorrow, where are they placed within us. My question huh. is, how do, how do you recommend people to distinguish between that which may be a true prophet and that which is false prophecy that comes from things that look good but I inherently are not good? That's I'll exactly one, the thing. I want to refer to, and I'm, I'm, I say this I hope, hopefully non judgmentally, uh, I have been told by disciples of Sun Young Moon by disciples of Guru Maharaji, by followers of Love Israel. Uh, I know all of that. I've been, I've been told by their disciples they all say the that, same they thing. Are the, that this, their master is the return of Christ. And the Bible tells me if, if a man comes to you and says, go into the desert for Christ is there, or, or out on the mountain, don't <coughs> believe it because it's not true. Now, can I tell you now, what you are telling is I understand. It's true that they all say the same thing. They have to say the same thing. See, the false people have to be exactly like the person who is a real person. Now, how to make it out is the problem. The problem is how to make it out, who is true, who is not. You were not there yesterday, did you? No, that's the reason. You see, I have to repeat it now. But I told them at the very outset how to make it out. First of all, you go to any God. For any God's work, you must know you cannot pay for it. First of all. Because such a person will talk of righteousness, of holiness, of sacredness. And he himself has to have that. Thirdly, first is the money. It will hit on money. If you just say one point, you will sufficient. Second, what have you got? Say, for example, if there is a Guru Maharaj, this person. Horrible, I wouldn't call him that. I call him Rakta Beach. All right. Now, this fellow, if his disciple is there, all right? You see, from the disciple. For example, if he says that he's got something, then you tell him, can you say, what's the matter with my chakras? Ask him. 
Can you say what's the chakra, what, what's the matter with your own chakra? Now these people know. They will tell you where is it. They can raise the Kundalini. They can show you the raising of the Kundalini. With your naked eyes you can see the raising of the Kundalini. Not in all. Of course, if you are a good weaker, it doesn't happen. But if there is obstruction, you can see. You can feel here, on top of your head. The thumb actually, and you don't just jump or do anything, but you see the cool breeze coming out. Is the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost that you have to see. After getting that, after you get it, I mean, it, it cannot be forced, it cannot be said, it is you who have to find out. You have to find out. You have to. All right. Then, when it has happened to you, you see, ask the question. Everything can be found out by asking questions. Ask a question. Is there God? You get a cool breeze in your hand. Quite good. If you are really realizing. But if you say, is this gentleman in the realized zone, you will get heat or your vibrations will stop. Or maybe you might get blisters. Your awareness becomes empowered with that discrimination because of this cool breeze of the Holy Ghost flowing through you. You start feeling it all pervading power around, which you do not feel before. So when these people talk to you, you should know what have you got yourself. All right? This is the main thing. What have you got? Now, as she said, we'll teach her how to give realization. Today, we'll be giving realization to people. Those who have felt, felt cool breeze yesterday can give realization today. Can you believe it? Those who felt the cool breeze yesterday and today also they are feeling it should come this side and they will give them realization. All right? Work it out. Let's let's have let's it. Have the experience. All right? Uh, who is the one who has to ask one more question? It should take long. Just ask me one. Huh? Now you ask now. Meditation? Not there. Not there. Mm -hmm. Not there. I'll tell you how to do the meditation part. You forget the rest. Now who is there? At the back. Now, Michael. Okay. Um, I hear a lot of people talking about God realization and about spiritual terminology, and I still see a lot of fear. And I'm what wondering if you could um, talk about how people can confront their fear and maybe let go of it. What did she say? She hears a lot of talk about realization and so on, but she the wants to know how to confront fear. That's her point. You see, first of all, unless and until I'm not talking, I'm going to make you get it. All right? Yes, yes. yes. That's the point. It's not talking. Let's do it now. You want me to talk all the time by asking no, questions. No, 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 no. Now one more. What is it? Is there a specific way that I can uh, protect my daughter when we're around? We'll, uh, we'll teach you all that. Now can we make it short? Better. Talking makes the people think. The more talking, the more think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, said it. Yes, said it. See, better not talk. Thinking, thinking, you won't get it. You have been thinking, talking, arguing, everything you have done so far. Now, better get to it and the get over your fears and everything. Now, come forward and little forward so that we leave you to stay there. And be comfortable. Sit down. It is a direct experience. That's amazing. Not the thing. Not the thinking. What he says is true. Thinking makes you even worse. You see, thinking is not the thing. Now, put your hands to it, just like that. Now, sit in a way where you are comfortable. As it is, I would say again, take it out this. 
little bit they have heavy things. Any necklace, heavy necklaces or anything? And these Rudrakshas also to be worn by people who have high blood pressure, not with low blood pressure, because that will make your blood pressure even lower. <coughs> Rudraksha, you see? Uh, these are meant for, these are meant for people who have got high blood pressure, not for people who have got low blood pressure. You see, everything has its own place. Now close it, please close it, and put both the hands towards me. Close your eyes, just close And don't shake your body. Keep it steady, you have to keep it steady. is the main point. Now your attention is just loosen it. Loosen your attention. Do not fix it into any part of it. But if you can't help it, then you can put your attention on top of your head, but not anywhere else. Do not fix it anywhere. Keep it loose. It will just work out. Again, put your right hand on your heart. <coughs> and ask the question, Mother, am I the spirit? Just ask the question. Now put your right hand at the base of your stomach on the left hand side. It's the Swadish Tanakh, on the left hand side. Just on the left hand side. It's very important. <coughs> now ask the question, Mother, am I the pure knowledge? Or make me the pure knowledge? That's it. Mother, make me the pure knowledge. You are. First of all, have confidence that you are that. You just awaken into that. Hmm. Now, Go a little high in the stomach, above the ocean of the spleen. See, you know that? Higher, nearer, the ribs, more on the rib. Not absolutely, a little lower than the ribs. Left heart. Left hand towards me. And right hand, just here, here. Now, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and say, Mother, make me my own guru. Your own guru, your own master. Make me my own guru. That's your right hand, the beating. But don't stop your beating. Think normally as much as you have. This year we say ten times. Oh. 
from your heart. Make me my own guru. That really gives you the discrimination. Now, very bit higher, put it at your heart level. Left hand should be towards me as if you are asking for something, alright? Just like this. Say it. Now, at the heart point, just say, Mother, am I the spirit? Please ask me, Mother, am I the spirit? Just ask. Most of you will get cool breeze at this point. Ten times again. So many are getting it. It's very cool. It's very cool. Good. Just ask, Mother, am I the spirit? Ten times. Good. <coughs> Without feeling deeply, again, I should say, first of all, they are not deeply better. Put your right hand higher on the neck, on the left hand side, on the neck. This is the left tissue. Now just say whether I'm not guilty. Say it again 16 times because you people are really a very bad tissue. I was clearing yesterday till 2 o'clock in the night your left tissue. This what is there to feel guilty, my dear girl? What harm have you done? Have you killed somebody? What have you done? Why are you so guilty? Go on saying, Mother, I am not guilty at all. Confidence is not there. Unnecessarily or definitely. Left side. Yeah. Just not to be guilty at all, alright? Uh, if you it. <laughs> you are punishing yourself for nothing to do. Why are you punishing yourself? Just say whether I'm not guilty. Put your right hand here. Close your eyes properly. Put it down here. See, there must be a kind of a lump of your so-called guilt. Or myth. It's all mythical. It's a very, very big myth you are carrying on and feeling sorry and suffering. What is there to suffer? You just say, Mother, I do not suffer and I have no guilt of any kind. I am very confident and I am a teacher and I am going to enter into the kingdom of God. Still there, still there, still there. I don't know how many years you have been for doing that. Don't think really about anything, whatever you have done is nothing. I'm talking about the ocean of love, the ocean of forgiveness, the ocean of compassion. And what is your gift? Not even a speck. Huh. Better now. Now you can put both the hands towards me. And now say, Mother, I forgive everyone. Actually, Lord's Prayer is the best for this. If you all know the Lord's Prayer and if you can say Christ, it will work out faster. Will you say that? Let's see. Our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Again. Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.
come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now ask for your neighbors. You have to ask. I cannot just give you without your asking. As I said, your freedom is the most important. You have to ask. Put your both hands towards me and say, Mother, please give us our realization or say, please give me my realization. You have to ask for it. Seven times. There are seven chapters. Just ask for your realization. It is your right to ask. Is your, your right to ask. 